Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. Hi, and welcome to the show. I gotta say, everybody, we are super, 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 super excited about this. And I'm not just saying that. We are legitimately really looking forward to this video. When we heard about it coming out, it's just been out for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, we are just, I can't wait to watch it. I'll just say that. Um, it's Yeah, we could not wait to get this, get the camera set up and everything and, and watch it. Absolutely. I, I brought out my uh, United States Marine shirt. Um, now, these shirts suck because like, they're so much cooler on the back side that you can't see. And there's a tiny little thing here. Just thought I'd let you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're really excited about this. Um, we haven't seen anything on the Royal Marines Band in a little while now. And I do miss it. I mean, yeah. the, the, everything we've seen so far has been awesome. And I amazing. cannot wait to see today's video. Absolutely amazing. And so then we found out. So this is the Mountbatten Festival of Music from 2023. And this is, of course, um, the bands of His Majesty's Royal Marines. And we heard that they did a special tribute to Queen Elizabeth II. Mm -hmm. And we also heard that King Charles is in the audience of this exact concert. So say no more. I mean, you had me at Royal Marines. <laughs> you had me at Music yep. Festival. You had me at Queen Elizabeth. You had me a tribute. We're, we're exactly. Just, what else can we ask for? I, I can't ask for any more. So I'm so excited to see this. I can't wait to watch it. I know we, we've both been talking about this oh, one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I cannot wait. If you guys like the videos that we put out and you'd like us to continue making them, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. But please don't do that just because we ask you. Please check out some of our other content. Make sure you want to subscribe before you do. Absolutely. Without any further ado, guys, let's dive into the Mountbatten Festival of Music of 2023. And let's see this tribute to Queen Elizabeth II with King Charles and audience by the Royal Marines Band. Well, the finale for tonight's Mountbatten Festival will pay tribute to the longest serving monarch in our nation's history, Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. With music composed and arranged by the core bandmaster and video produced by band sergeant James Dunlop, a life of dedication reflects on the story of this truly remarkable sovereign, mm. her unfaltering dedication oh, to Britain absolutely. and the Commonwealth, and her enduring relationship with the senior service. Mm. Can't wait to see it. I'm just going to pause where it starts and say this. Um, you know, been really missing her since the coronation, especially. Mm. I said in that video we did on the coronation, when everyone came up um, in Buckingham Palace yeah. outside um, and not seeing her out there just really nailed me. And mm -hmm. it made me really upset for the next couple weeks because people kept commenting and I'm like, yeah, I know. I feel your pain on this one. Absolutely, we so, do. Sorry, just want to say it real quick. Here we go. <laughs> Mm. Here's Scott. On the 19th of September, 2022, the nation fell silent as we paid our final respects during the state funeral of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Yeah. As head of state, the Commonwealth and commander in chief of the British Armed Forces, she served the nation for over 70 years. The admiration she held for her armed forces was a common thread throughout her truly remarkable life. Oh, that's beautiful. A life of dedication. Amen. Sure was. Well, that's something I hadn't seen before. I love it. Mm. Mm.
The young princess was born on the 21st of April, 1926, at 17 Bruton Street in Mayfair. The first child of Prince Albert, Duke of York, and his wife Elizabeth, Duchess of York, she was born into a naval family. Her father served before and during the Great War, including at the Battle of Jutland on the battleship HMS Collingwood. In December 1936, after the abdication of her uncle, King Edward VIII, her quiet family life came to an end. Yeah. Her father acceded to the throne as King George VI, and from then on, the young princess was the first in line to the throne. Oh, happier times for her. In 1937, she joined her parents aboard the old Royal Yacht Victoria and Albert at the Coronation Fleet Review, the first of many such gatherings of naval might she would attend over the next 75 years. Wow. A few years later, she was hosted by young Prince Philip Mountbatten. <laughs> King and Queen visited Britannia Royal Naval College in Dartmouth. During the war years, the young princess spent most of her time at Windsor Castle, continuing with her education, studying art and music, and learning to ride horses. She also continued her royal duties by giving her first radio broadcast during the BBC's Children's Hour. Huh. No. Didn't know that. No. In wishing you all good evening, I feel that I am speaking to friends and companions who have shared with my sister and myself many a happy children's hour. Thousands of you in this country have had to leave your homes and be separated from your fathers and mothers. Wow. We are trying to do all we can to help our gallant sailors, soldiers and airmen. And we are trying too to bear our own share of the danger and sadness of war. My sister is by my side, and we are both going to say good night to you. Come oh. on, Margaret. <laughs> good night, children. Good night, and good luck to you all. How sweet. I have not heard that before. That is amazing. Sorry. <laughs> that Beautiful. Is, Heartbreaking, that great. too. I didn't know that they had done that. I had no idea. You're good. Okay. Oh. The Queen's relationship with the armed forces really began in 1945, when, as Princess Elizabeth, she joined the Auxiliary Territorial Service, becoming the first female member of the royal family to join the armed services as a full-time member. And because of that, uh, you absolutely deserve that. Absolutely. Thank you for your service, ma'am. Absolutely, thank you. During her time in the ATS, the princess learned to drive and maintain vehicles. And from that point on, the queen maintained a very close relationship through regular visits to naval establishments and ships. And she held many military appointments and honorary ranks throughout her lifetime. <laughs> this is beautiful footage. I'd be so seasick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. In July 1947, the engagement of Lieutenant Philip Mountbatten to Princess Elizabeth was announced, and the marriage took place in Westminster Abbey on the 20th of November of that year. Shortly before the wedding, the bridegroom was given the title of Duke of Edinburgh and appointed Knight of the Garter by King George VI. See of people. Jeez. As it should be. Just think of how hard it was for everybody to get there. Yeah. Just beautiful. Yeah. Oh. 
sorry to interrupt. I don't know if I've told you this. I don't think I have. But um, <clears throat> when I was um, editing uh, our 200th episode where we, you know, told about the top 10 things we love about mm -hmm. the UK so far. And of course she was on the list. Mm -hmm. And certain photos we put in of her and then it would transition back to us. Her whole life to her country. And her people. To serving. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing to see her integrity that she held throughout the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, and to, to be in such public figure it's you have her. She ha you have her eyes. Oh, really? You absolutely do. How flattering! You do. Thank you. Like I, since you, your mom had her eyes, mm. and you have her eyes. I see that, and you may think I'm crazy, mm. but you know, being up close to these photos and editing, and seeing her and knowing her for 20 years almost, they have the same eyes. Well, thank you. That's that, that's very. I mean it. Very nice. The clothing back then was so much cooler. Oh, much it's more epic. beautiful. He was so handsome too. He really was. They were a beautiful couple. Mm -hmm. After their marriage, the young couple spent their honeymoon at Broadlands in Hampshire and at Burkle in Balmoral. They were able to live a relatively private life, with the Duke pursuing his naval career whilst the princess cared for a young Prince Charles. <laughs> From 1949 to 1951, she was a royal princess, naval wife and mother, living in Malta while Prince Philip was serving with the Mediterranean mm -hmm. fleet as first lieutenant of HMS Chequers, and then in command of HMS Magpie. Malta was said to hold very fond memories for the couple, who looked back on their carefree time there fondly later in life. <laughs> Churchill. On February the 6th, 1952, she received the news of her father's death and her own accession to the throne, yeah. whilst on an official visit to Kenya. The new queen and the Duke of Edinburgh immediately flew back to Britain, returning to Clarence House, where the royal standard was flown for the first time in her reign. I forget, keep forgetting King, King Charles was watching this right now. The coronation right. took place in Westminster Abbey on the 2nd of June, 1953, and the ceremony was broadcast on radio around the world, and at the Queen's request, on television for the very first time. An estimated 27 million people in Britain watched the ceremony as the Archbishop of Canterbury anointed Her Majesty. Such a moment. As head of the Commonwealth, the Queen played an important role in reinforcing the links that joined people together across the globe. She made more than 200 visits to Commonwealth countries, spanning many regions, religions and cultures, with her first official visit being to South Africa in 1947 as Princess Elizabeth. During her reign, the Commonwealth grew from just seven nations to 56, representing two and a half billion people. It's huge. Her royal yeah. duties included meeting Queen Salote of Tonga in 1953, the opening of the Sydney Opera House in 1973. She attended 22 Commonwealth heads of government, seven Commonwealth Games, and since 1977, Commonwealth Day has been celebrated throughout the Commonwealth almost every year of her reign. This is beautiful, you guys, this is beautiful. Yes. Although Her Majesty travelled extensively to many countries across the globe, she still managed to support her armed forces, especially the Royal Navy. Few yep. people launched more ships than Her Majesty. Mm -hmm. 
Her first, at just 18 years old, was the mighty battleship HMS Vanguard. Okay. In the seven decades that followed, no year went by without Her Majesty being involved with the senior service. Love Launchings, it. commissionings, official openings and visits to ships and units all demonstrated the admiration uh. she held for the Royal Navy. Of the numerous vessels she sponsored since launching HMS Vanguard, only two remain in service today. Really? HMS Lancaster, the Queen's frigate, and the aircraft carrier HMS Queen Elizabeth. I knew that. A home away from home, her beloved royal yacht Britannia served the royal family for over 44 years. Hosting state visits, royal honeymoons, banquets and family holidays, Britannia was a majestic symbol of the Commonwealth and a proud ambassador of the United Kingdom. Amongst the 220 crew, a Royal Marines band was aboard to entertain during the official visits, really? providing dinner it. music and beating retreats. Decommissioned in 1997, it was clear how much this ship meant to Her Majesty and to the rest of the royal family. Definitely. Can I just say for a minute, though, how amazing the Royal Marines Band is doing right now? Like, with this, it's uh -huh. just, like, I'm, I'm listening, I'm seeing, but I'm also feeling and hearing, you know, yes. the music, too. It's yes. just, this is just so well done, in my opinion. Mm. And I'm learning things I didn't know and seeing footage I've never seen, and it's just making me fall in love with her all over again. Oh, in a absolutely. whole different way, actually. It's absolutely. just, this is beautiful. And I Abs love seeing this old footage, like you mentioned. We haven't looked at that. We need to look at that. Mm -hmm. Throughout the Queen's life, there have been times of loss and reflection. Yeah. The Aberfan mining disaster in 1966, the London bomb attacks in 1982 and 2005, the fire mm. at Windsor Castle yeah. in 1992, mm -hmm. the death of Princess Diana in 1997. The death of her sister Margaret and the Queen Mother in 2002. A lot of loss. And of course, yeah. the death yes. of her beloved Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, in 2021. Mm -hmm. But despite those sadder times, Her Majesty's duty to her people and the nation never wavered. Amen. I know, sure didn't. Said it. Such a class of fashion. Her Majesty celebrated many jubilees over the years, but in 2022, we celebrated her Platinum Jubilee. She was the first British monarch to reach such a milestone. Yep. Events took place around the world to mark this occasion, yep. with London becoming the centre of celebrations. A spectacular concert at Buckingham Palace and a pageant parade down the Mall concluded a weekend of events mm -hmm. that reinforced the Sovereign's role as a force for unity and national identity. Mm. So hard to see her up there again. Mm. Just seeing her there at all and then she looks just so frail. <laughs> mm. Which she was, I know, but still. But what a tribute this is. I this is amazing. This. The Royal Marines Band, I mean, they just... Yes. Every time, man, they kill me. Mm -hmm. In a good way. ...and national identity. Ugh. It was announced at 6.30 p.m. on the 8th of September, 2022, that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II had passed away peacefully at Balmoral Castle at the age of 96. The state funeral took place on the 19th of September and was attended by 2,000 people, including 500 heads of state and foreign dignitaries. 
Around 6,000 armed forces personnel took part, and an estimated one million people lined the streets. The Royal Navy played an important role, with 96 Royal Navy sailors having the honor of pulling the state gun carriage during the procession through the streets of London. And how beautifully and how well did they do that? All of it was so perfectly planned. You're crying, I'm crying. I'm like trying to hide it for once in my life, but it was just such a beautiful, beautiful service and so perfect for her. And she deserved every daggone second yeah, of it. Yeah, so honorable. It was, it was just, it was an honor for us to be part of that with you. Yeah. We know that it, <clears throat> sorry, felt crushed along with you. We really did. And we still do. Mm -hmm. And that's partly why we're doing this video because, you know, we fell in, we've fallen in love with her in this last year and a half, almost, actually, only almost, almost two years now. And um, we feel like we've lost a member of our family too. We do. And and this is a tribute to her and her life. And absolutely, we want to be a part of that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and uh, pay respect and and celebrate her life because, I mean, it was a long, beautiful, strong life. Well said. Amazing woman. Well said. Having the honor of pulling the state gun carriage during the procession through the streets of London. Everybody handled themselves with such dignity. Mm -hmm. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II was the fabric that oh. held a nation together. She ruled for longer than any other monarch in British history, becoming a much-loved and respected figure around the world. So true. She fulfilled her promise, devoting her whole life to the service of her people and our great nation. Wow. I know. Look back there and see all the people. Wow. It's amazing. I just want to say that like so many people show up to people's people in people's lives after they're gone at a funeral, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't show up while they're alive. But y'all did. You know, you did during the Jubilees and every other ten, yes. every other thing, you know, like that was important. You didn't just show up here. Mm -hmm. You showed up all the time for her and um don't think for one second she didn't feel that love. <clears throat> I mean, I feel it, and I'm not her. <laughs> but exactly. look at that. That is... Mm -hmm. I have no word for it. As we look back mm -hmm. at her remarkable life of dedication, we give thanks for the duty she's given as we start a new journey and future under the reign of King Charles III. You can't say he doesn't have the same respect, admiration, and love for the military that his mom did. They do. They had oh. the same exact. You can see it, and you can see it at the coronation, you know, with the royal salute, how he did not want to go back in. Mm -hmm. And that really hit a chord with me deeply. And um, I respect the crap out of him for that reason right there. Yeah, they both have that strong connection. Absolutely. And I'm pretty sure William does as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Ah, you're gonna break my heart like this?
Absolutely. Wow. Uh, I know brought you to tears, brought me to tears. Um, what a tribute to her. Royal Marines Band, you do not disappoint. <laughs> Never. Um, mm -hmm. Man. Um, so much love for the Royal Navy, too, which was, I mean, obviously, obviously. And that was great. I absolutely love that. Um, that was, like, really stunning, beautiful, poignant, respectful, dignified, mm -hmm. admirable. And at the same time, the music was great. It, it all suited it lovely. And um, seeing him at the end, too, epic. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, a lot of emotion, you know, um, sadness, pride, you know, gratitude. Mm-hmm. Gratitude. Joy. I feel gratitude. And definitely gratitude, yes, of course. Um, she definitely dedicated her life to serving um, and a great role model. Absolutely. For the world. Uh, yeah. For the world. Yep. Nailed it. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, just, you know, it, like I said, it's hard to say goodbye to anyone, you know, but we keep them alive with moments like this, tributes like this. You yes. keep them alive. And I, I said in one video, you know, she's, her legacy will never go away. You know, she's forever ingrained in the fabric of humanity. Those exact mm -hmm. words I said. And I meant that. And, um, you know, for those that are against Queen Elizabeth or whatever, you know, just, I don't know. I got nothing to say to you. I don't. Because, exactly. you know, some people think that we're like pro-monarchy because we we watch things like this. We, we're very happy with our current government and want it to stay that way um, as far as the type of government we have. Mm. <laughs> let, me, let me make sure I say it that way. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't love and appreciate. And share and respect. Res thank you. I was just going to say mm -hmm. that. For other, other types of governments. And we absolutely do. And again, I say it all the time. You say it all the time. We're allies. We're cousins. We're, we're in this world and this life together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we felt a lot of your pain. And, you know, we still do. But, you know, things like this help to keep her alive and remind people, you know, what you had yes. and what you still do in the legacy. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I am just forever honored. Honestly, guys. Um, sorry. I'm, I'm forever honored to be a part of this time in history, a part of this, um, mm -hmm. part of Queen Elizabeth's life and yeah. Yeah. That way we get this time on this channel to show our respect. Um, having done this for a little while, we got to learn a lot about her before yeah. her passing and now we can still pay, um, honor and respect to her even after life. Absolutely. And how fortunate is the world to have some of the footage that is there from so when, she, when she was a little girl. Absolutely. I mean, that is absolutely amazing. And I love how they put this together, the timeline, everything. And obviously with the music in the background, nailed it every time, brought tears to my eyes. Absolutely. Uh, yes. And now we know that Tripping of the Color um, was yesterday, but we looked at Tripping of the Color last year. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying we didn't, we're not, we're going to watch Tripping the Color, but we're not going to fake a reaction. You know, we're not going to be like, hey, we're watching this for the first time. But we'll, we'll be watching that in our own time and we plan to watch it. Um, we haven't yet, but we plan to. Um, but just, I can't thank you guys enough for, um, for being here with us. And I mm -hmm. hope that you enjoyed this. I really do. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope it helped, helps you reflect back on nothing but good. You know, of course, there's going to be sadness, obviously, mm -hmm. but I hope this fills your heart up, too. And, uh, you know, it's just it's just beautiful. I have nothing else to say about it. It's just beautiful. Absolutely. So um, thank you for allowing us to be part of your lives, a part of, of this journey that has really changed us as people in a lot of ways. And we've learned so much and still have so much to learn. And uh, with that, I'm going to say um, we'll see you next time. And until that time, love like jazz. Be as strong as Tyson. Bye, guys. Bye.